in the middle of World War II, having captured territory in much of present-day Ukraine and Belarus in the spring of 1942, Germany's um, foot forces decided to mount an offensive on southern Russia in the summer of that year. However, it wasn't successful. As a result of that, the German army set their sights on Stalingrad because the city served as an industrial center in Russia, producing artillery for the country's troops. It was also on the outskirts of Russia, and capturing it would be beneficial in invading the lower part of Russia. The Volga River, which next to and through the city, was also an important shipping route connecting the western part of the country with its distant eastern regions. As an added bonus, there were also many abundant oil fields nearby that could be used for whatever the Germans saw fit. After thinking it over, Hitler wanted the armed forces, or the Wehrmacht, to occupy Stalingrad for all the reasons above and for seeing its value for propaganda purposes, since it bore Stalin's name. For the exact opposite reason, the Russians felt a special need to protect it, since it had Stalin's name in it. When Hitler announced that upon, that upon taking Stalingrad, all the city's male residents would be killed and its women deported, Stalin was ready to fight until the last man to defend the city. The 6th Army of the Wehrmacht began, began, their, ta began their assault on August 23, 1942. Russian forces were initially able to slow the German Wehrmacht's advances during a series of brutal skirmishes just north of Stalingrad in the forests. In the end, Stalin's forces lost more than 200,000 men, but they successfully held off German soldiers. While the battles outside the cities were occurring, the Russians had already shipped much of the stores of grain and cattle out of Stalingrad. However, the city's 400,000-plus residents were not evacuated, as the Russian leadership believed that their presence would inspire troops. I think that this was a bad idea in all respects, and at the end of the battle, about 40,000 civilians, or one-tenth of the city's population, died in the battle. Within a few days of launching its attack, Germany's air force rent had rendered the Volga River impassable to shipping and had sunk several Russian commercial vessels in the process. From late August through the end of the assault, the air force conducted dozens of airstrikes on the city. By September, the Luftwaffe had, more or less, complete dominance of the skies over Stalingrad, and the Russians were getting desperate. Workers in the city not involved in war-related weapons production were soon asked to take up fighting, often without firearms of their own. Women were also enlisted to dig up trenches at the front lines. By the fall of 1942, Stalingrad was in ruins. Mm, let's see, I think this is the right slide. Yeah. Despite heavy casualties and the pounding delivered by the Air Force, Stalin told his forces in the city to take not a step back. Those who surrendered would be subject to a trial by military tribunal and face possible execution. With fewer than 20,000 troops in the city and less than 100 tanks, Stalin's generals finally began sending reinforcements into the city and the surrounding areas outside of the city. Fighting raged in the streets of Stalingrad, with both sides using snipers poised on the roofs of the city's buildings. Then, Russian generals Georgi Zhukov and Alexander Vel Vasilevsky organized Russian troops in the mountains to the north and west of the city. From there, they launched a counterattack, which became infamously known as Operation Uranus. Although Although the Russians again sustained significant losses, they were able to form a defensive ring around the city by late November 1942, trapping the nearly 300,000 German and Axis troops in the 6th Army. With the Russian blockade limiting access to supplies, German forces trapped in Stalingrad slowly starved. The Russians would seize that weakness during the cold, harsh winter months that followed. As Russia's brutal winter began, Soviet generals knew that the Germans would be at a disadvantage, since they were fighting in conditions to which they weren't accustomed. They began consolidating all of their positions around Stalingrad, choking off the German forces from vital supplies and essentially surrounding them in an ever-tightening noose. Thanks to Russian gains in nearby fighting, the Axis forces were stretched thin throughout Europe. At this point, th most German generals abandoned all efforts to retrieve their forces trapped in Stalingrad. 
Still, Hitler refused to surrender, even as his men slowly starved and ran out of ammunition to fight the Russians with. By February 1943, Russian troops had retaken Stalingrad and taken 100,000 German soldiers as POWs, or prisoners of war, though pockets of resistance continued to fight in the city until early March. Most of the captured soldiers died in Russian prison camps, either as a result of disease or starvation. The devastating defeat at Stalingrad was also the first failure of the war to be publicly acknowledged by Hitler. Furthermore, it also put Hitler in the Axis powers on the defensive and boosted Russian confidence. As a whole, many historians believe that the Battle of Stalingrad marked a turning point in the conflict. It was the beginning of the march towards victory for the Allied forces of Russia, France, Britain, and the U.S. The main type of warfare that took place was infantry warfare, although tank and aerial warfare was also a major part of the battle. The Axis casualties was around 800,000. The Russian casualties was around 1,100,000. The civilian casualties were around 40,000. And as a whole, the total casualties were about 1,940,000 or pretty much 2 million. And that's it.